In this screencast I will show you how to install Frog, uh, add a new activity package and do some minimal edits to it. So we'll start by checking out from the Frog GitHub repo. And we'll run initial setup which will um, install all the packages and link up the different packages. So this whole process might take five to even ten minutes. Um, once we're done with that, we have uh, quite a lot of different files and packages. We have the main frog uh, package, which is the actual Meteor app that we'll be running. We have uh, frog utils, which has a, both the type definitions and a bunch of general uh, tools, and this is the package that all other packages depends on. And we have the various um, activities that are installed and the various operators. And these are all uh, independent NPM packages. They just happen to live in the same repository. And we use a bunch of sim links to keep them linked up to make live uh, development easier. And that's all been set up by the initial setup script. So we can go into frog and we can type meteor to get started on uh, running the program. And Meteor is running. And this might again take uh, two or three minutes, uh, especially the first time you're running it. But as you'll see, once it's running, it's actually watching all of the files, including the included packages, and it can uh, reload its state very, very quickly. So now let's go and look at what we have. So this is uh, Meteor, and we have uh, a development shortcut that lets us uh, log in as anyone without creating user accounts, just to be able to test with many users. So I'll go into the teacher view as Stia. And uh, we don't have any graphs yet, so I'll go into the graph editor. I can say that I want a new activity, um, something. And here I can choose what kind of activity type I want. And these activity types are all provided by the activity packages that got installed together with Frog. And what I wanted to show in this brain, um, screencast is how can we create a new activity package. So let's leave this for now. Let's go back here. I'll open up a new tab. So we'll leave Meteor running. And basically, I just need to provide the activity title and uh, the short name. So we don't quite know what our activity is supposed to do yet. So we'll just call it AC uh, New Activity, Awesome New Activity. So that um, all the new uh, changes that we make will be picked up. Okay. Now let's go back to uh, Meteor and let's see if it has picked up the new changes. So there we go. Um, now we see on this list uh, the awesome new activity that we just created. Right? And right now, what does the awesome new activity do? It doesn't actually do anything, it just shows you uh, whatever data it gets in. Um, so we can go into the teacher view uh, and we can actually uh, create a session. And we'll start it, and we'll see what this looks like to students. And as you see right now, it's just displaying the incoming data. There's no incoming data, so there's um, so we could now write any kind of activity that we'd want. Let's um, add some incoming data just for fun. So let's go back to the graph editor, and let's add a product operator that will go to hypothesis is this uh, annotation uh, website and it will get um, annotations related to social network analysis and we'll connect this to our brand new activity okay. we'll go here we'll restart we see here we have the operator and um, the fact that it's green means that it's calculated and we'll go and look at what this looks like for the student and now we see that we actually are getting a lot of data into our activity uh, from this operator 
and now we could write some code to d show this very nicely. Um, so let me s look, show you how this um, activity looks like. So uh, the um, structure of an activity package is defined uh, in this type activity package T. And you see here that we export a single object, which kind of contains all the different components. And this object has to um, correspond to activity package T. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to frog utils types. And here we see that activity package T, it has to have an ID, which is a string. It has to have some metadata, the type, the name. It has to have some config, which is an arbitrary object. It has to have, it can have a merge function. It has to have an activity runner, which we returns a React component. And the activity runner, uh, all of its uh, props that you see here, activity runner T, are specified here. So this is the props that the uh, actual runner will receive. It will receive a logging function. It will receive the activity data, which is what we were just um, logging on the screen. It will receive reactive data and uh, data FN, which we'll talk more about, and also some user info about the current user. So let's go back here. And we see here that we have some metadata, the awesome new activity. This is what we typed in. It's the type of React component, which is the only type of component we have right now. Uh, config is what you get when you try to configure the activity. Um, so we'll just leave that for now. We're not using it. Um, then you see here the actual React component that gets run when the student is looking at the activity. And right now, as you see, it takes activity data as a prop, and it uh, just JSON stringifies it. Um, now what we could do is we could do activity data dot map and um, you know display a nice list of all these um, annotations. But um, what we actually want to do is uh, we want to let people work with the data and modify it. And activity data is just a kind of incoming stream. Uh, it's this activity cannot modify the activity data in any way. So for some things it's very useful if you. Um, have one activity that sends a URL of a video and you just want to show that video, you can just use activity data and there's no problem. But in cases where you want to have students actually modify, add to, and so on, the data that's coming in, we use this reactive data function. So um, we have this concept of activity instances because we have these, um, if we go back to the editor, you see these three lines and this first line corresponds to individual activities the second one to team-based activities and the third one to whole class so right now we have a whole class activity which means that everyone in the class share a single reactive data structure and we call that a single instance in the second um, level we could have a different instance per uh, per group and we can have different kinds of groupings and on the first level, it would be a separate instance per student, so the students would not share any data. And a lot of this is really handled by the engine, so the activity does not have to worry about it too much. But the idea is, at um, initialization time, the activity data gets passed to this merge function, which takes two things. It takes an object, which has config and data, and a data function, which is a set of functions to operate on the reactive data structure. Uh, if we want to know more about the data functions, we can go to the generate reactive function. And here we see a set of um, functions uh, so we can operate on lists or on objects. So prepend, append, insert, delete, replace, uh, object insert, and so on. The reason why, why we need special functions is because these data structures are synchronized across many students. And we want to make sure that if a bunch of people are updating different um, subpaths at the same time, that they don't overwrite each other. Um, okay. So going back here, we kind of know the shape of the data that we're getting in. 
and what we want to do is to merge it with um, our reactive data structure at the beginning so that we later can modify it. Um, so let's try to do that. So this object, if we go back to the display, student view, we see here that it's an array of, so let me just copy this for example, so let me copy this here. Let's look at this data structure a little bit closer. So we see here that it's um, an array of objects. Each object has an ID, a content, and a title. And how are we going to represent this? Uh, we are going to use an object with the keys as ID um, because it's a little bit easier to work with. So we will do object data for each item to data at the end object insert item keyed by item ID. I'm just going to delete this. And if you want to see the definition of all the um, data functions, you can go to this uh, generate reactive function in uh, frog utils. And here you see the definition of all the different functions we're working with. OK, so let's change JSON stringing frag here to data. So this will be the reactive data structure. This is the data structure that all the students can actually modify. And let's see if this works. OK, so we'll restart the session. And now we see, instead of an array, we see this object that has the ID as the key, and then the content is uh, the same. Now let's make this look a bit nicer. So let's do data. Dot, so actually, we need object keys data map and there we go perfect so again we will just wait for meteor to reload and it looks very different now my uh, lee clearly doesn't work well with the h1s so let me just make that into a bold but i think we're getting somewhere Web design was never my uh, strength. OK, so we have a nice list, uh, but let's add some interactivity. So let's add, for example, the option to delete an entry. So I'm going to just get something in frog utils. And then here, let's just add on click. So we have data fn obj delete data k and k. So and then we'll just make it an x because again we're not going for good looking. That looks good. So basically I'm just putting in an x that's a hyperlink and it has an onclick, which calls object delete. Turns out it should be obj del instead. And that seems to work very well. Now let's uh, add uh, some scoring uh, function so we can vote up the ideas. So here, instead of just getting the item, I'm going to add a default score for all the items. And then here, instead of using the object keys, I'm going to do object values data sort um, a b to b score minus a score map 
Now we're going to have to rewrite this a little bit. Then we're going to add the score. And a vote button. So in this case, we'll have so the idea of um, incrementing the number is that these um, uh, actions are all atomic. So if you have a bunch of students all voting at the same time then all the votes should be taken into account. It shouldn't just overwrite the number with um, uh, so votes get lost. And you see here that we can give the path as an array. So we have we want the score object, the score key, which is in the object key by k.id. And we'll call this vote up. So let's see how this works. And we see here, I mean, it's not very pretty, but you can see here score zero. And if I vote this one up, then I made a mistake, clearly, because it should not be object object. Ah, I should increase it by one, not by k. Easy mistake. So let's try this again. Oh, there we go. This went up, this went up, this goes up, this goes on top. Yes, perfect, that's working. The final thing we want to add, apart from lots of um, layout, is a way for students to add new ideas. Okay, And for that, one nice thing is to do a form, and we use uh, React JSON schema form a lot. And the nice thing about it is that you can just um, specify how the form should look. So in this case, we want a title and we want a content. So we can see here live, it should be con oops. Let's see, maybe I should change this. There you go. So, title and content, and you can see here that the resulting data structure mirrors perfectly the way you want the data to be structured. So now we can just copy this. We've verified that it works. We can say this is um, form definition. There we go. And now we're just going to put in a form at the bottom here. Well, we have to import it. So we'll import form. We will display the form here. So we'll do form schema equals form def on submit. There we go. Okay. That should be it. Let's see. And we have a form. Um, so let's uh, see how this works. We'll add um, add a new um, uh, idea, and it popped up somewhere. I think there we go. We can load it up, and so on. So that's how you create activities. Now that final final thing I want to do is to show you that this is not just a single activity for a single user um, because we're using this reactive data structure we can now reuse this exact activity with multiple users um, in different groups and so on so I'm going to go back to the graph editor and I'm going to create a new graph that's a little bit more advanced so let's put the awesome activity on the second plane because we want some um, we want some teams okay we'll put in again the hypothesis ideas but we want some groups because um, so we'll uh, create some groups We'll have maximum, let's say, maximum two people in each group. 
and we'll connect that to the activities with nodes to group by this social structure. And then we'll give each group a few different ideas to play with. So we'll have another product operator. It's called distribute content. It will distribute based on group. And let's say it gives uh, three items to each group. And so it needs access to the items and to the social structures. And it delivers its output to the activity. Just to note that the placement of these um, operators is completely arbitrary. The only thing that matters is which connection is going in and which connections are going out. Okay, so as you see, we have not changed the activity itself in any way, but we have wired it up a bit differently. To be able to test this, we need some users. So now we have um, Janne, Peter, Ula, and Stian. They're all into the system. Session based on this new graph that you see here. We'll uh, join all the students and we'll start this session. So right away, you see that we have uh, these two students are in group two and they obviously share the same reactive data structure. And this student is in group one. And in fact, if we go to student view, then the teacher who is also counted as a student in this case, is also in group one, as you see here. And because this is a reactive data structure, um, anything that this student does will be uh, reflected. Anything that this student does will be reflected here. If this student adds a new um, idea, then you see it's showing up uh, in both places, and, uh, and so on and so on. So that's the end of this video. I showed you how to install Frog from scratch, how to create a new activity package, and uh, begin to look at the data coming in and how we could then uh, switch from using activity data to the reactive data structure, merge uh, the incoming data into the reactive data structure, display it, and mm, let the student modify it. And finally, how uh, something that works with a single student uh, because of the reactive data structure and the social flow and stuff like that can easily be slotted into a fairly complex graph. Um, just a final word is that it. Um, it can always be useful to um, inspect um, one of these activities using the, the React um, perfect tools. So if we go here, uh, we can, for example, search for, this is awesome, no, new, we call it the new activity. So here's the new activity. And here we see right away exactly what kind of activity data that it's receiving. So we see that activity data has not changed. As I, meant, I made this point, zero, one, two, that's the three incoming. However, the data has changed. First of all, it's a different structure, as you remember. We put it into an object that has these um, things. But also, we have this one that we just added. So this is added to the reactive data structure, which, um, but not, and then we have the data functions, as I mentioned, um, with all these, uh, these functions. Um, we have the logger, the user info, which shows you who is logged in right now and so on. So I will um, finish there. Uh, hopefully this was useful and some of these things might change because we're constantly um, <laughs> working on the code, but uh, hopefully you saw that we're trying to make, uh, going from a creative idea about how to help students collaborate in activity to an actual functioning activity that can be part of a complex graph as easy as possible. Thank you.